Hello guys, Jerry here with 3DHP, and I'm going to do some upgrades on my big 1300 by 1300 Jumitsu CNC, and I need to create these larger aluminum plates. And I was working on this yesterday, and I wanted this video to be my first time cutting with aluminum, but actually it's going to be my second time. I've got these plates here, they're 300 by 300, they're quarter inch thick, 11 millimeters, and I was going to cut off these two plates, but when I took the SVG filed, and I imported it into Carbco Maker, or I dragged, dragged it and dropped the file in there. For some reason, it sized it wrong. I have no idea why this happened. So anyway, I was working with it yesterday, and I got the circle cut out. I was using G Sender, and I got the new version of G Sender. It just came out a day or two ago. I, I mean, I downloaded it a day or two ago, got it installed, and I kept having hold errors, and I kept having com errors and losing connection. It drove me bananas for like an hour, hour and a half. I'd have to go back, rehome it, restart it, and then on one pass, doing the perimeter here, when it got down to the bottom, and just went, yeah, and ran a scar in it, so I stopped it when it got to there. No idea why this happened. I looked online, had a few things, a few people having trouble. Something was on there about Gerbil Howl. Well, I unchecked that and went back to the straight Gerbil. Couldn't seem to fix the problem. So then once I restart the job and the bit came over and dropped into the starting point, since this machine on top of the stepper has a knob, I was able to crank it back down roughly to where it was at so I wouldn't have to start over with a zillion passes up on top and work its way down. So I eventually got it cut out and I was feeling pretty good about the whole thing. As far as for the scar, that can go on the insides. I need two brackets. Then I have to drill a bunch of holes that go in here. And I was feeling pretty good about it until I went and sized it up with a piece of paper that comes with it. Here, let me grab that. I went and printed out the piece of paper so I could lay down the template on there and mark the holes and go, whoa, no, what happened? That's <laughs> definitely, I wasted a good piece of aluminum here, but it was a learning experience. And when I finally finished this, I was using candle because g Center kept screwing up, kept losing calm errors, kept having problems, like 20 different times. And I was trying to hyperlapse it. I got a lot of footage, but I'm not going to use any of it because here's the conclusion. Here's what happened. Finally got it cut out, came out really clean. Well, online, I wasn't sure how to cut aluminum, so I had two people help me out there. I was watching videos from, oh, Roger Webb, and then I got contacted uh, my friend Dave Gatton, and he gave me some recommendations, and I was reading different things and kind of juggling it, and then this is what I came up with. I've got a quarter-inch oath loop bit, and that's, uh, I forget the name of it, I shall show it here on the screen, and that's what I'm working with. But on this one, I'm going to run both holes. Then I'll do both perimeters, and it should work perfect. I put this in Carbco Maker. I've done a copy, brought the second one over here. I don't think my bit can drill the holes properly, so for now, what I think I'm going to do so I don't break a bit, and I don't have any other bits that'll work good for this, and I know if they're all wood bits, I will get these cut out like this, lay on the template, and I'll take a punch, and I'll mark each one of them and drill them out and try to get these two completed. But that's my idea, so let's set up the hyperlapse and we'll get going right now. Oh, one other thing. When I glued all this down, I used to, I'll show you the picture here. I used two sided, I used a blue tape. I blue taped the bottom, blue taped the other side. I used some star bond here. I went over all the star bond. No activator, because the minute I set the plate, I already had a pencil line here. I wanted to make sure I'm perfectly square with the machine. So I got out my little uh, caliper. Got on my caliper and I had it marked and I checked the edge here and here really quick and it was exactly the same like 14 millimeters and well anyway set up like 14 centimeters 14 millimeters whatever but I had it set up exactly on that line you know clamped it down tight we're good to go so I just need to come over X Y and Z on this corner bring it up like five millimeters and we'll get going so here we go Alrighty, that's all done. I was on a speed setting of 5 on the Jumitsu CNC router. Seems like it cut okay. I did nick one clamp right here because I had my clamp too close, but it's aluminum and went right through it. 
So when I went past it, I just readjusted it. But like I said, the blue tape and uh, super glue was the whole point was to hold it in place so I wouldn't have to put tabs in. Then that's just one other thing to try to cut off and grind off and make it look pretty. Blue tape worked great, and I clamped it down. Let's see what kind of uh, chips I have here. Like I say, yesterday was the first time I ever tried aluminum on that bigger plate I showed you than this here today, so I'm pretty happy with it. So now I gotta go figure out if the template fits it properly and if I'm gonna drill the holes in here on my bench press or if I'm gonna try to figure out what bit to use to use the bit to punch them. Not sure, but we'll know here in a minute. Let me get all this vacuumed up. Let's take a look here, look at all the mess. See, I got debris everywhere. So I'll get my shop back, get all this vacuumed up, and then we'll move on. Okay, I've got the area all cleaned up. I vacuumed everything up, and then I took my air compressor and got in the nooks and crannies, and it all looks pretty again. I took some scissors, I cut off the template, and look, it's the correct size. Thank God, because this aluminum is getting expensive. But yeah, so here will be my second and third cut ever on a CMC, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it came out good. Now, I did notice on the ramping, it was sitting in one spot, going down a half a millimeter, then continuing each time it went around. I'm sure in Roger's video, I wasn't paying attention, but I think he explained how to do that. He just didn't explain why it does that. I think I can ramp as it's moving. That way it'll be a continuous carve, and I won't have to worry about stopping, going down a little bit, and then moving. I think it can move on the go. It can ramp down while it's traveling. So let me figure out what I'm going to do on all these holes. See, I got the bigger ones there. I've got one, two, three, four. I got seven bigger ones and the four smaller ones for the stepper motor. Let me get that figured out. And that will be going over, going over here eventually on my 13x13 Jimitsu, which is a Prober V2XL modified. I'm putting linear rails on it, and I'm doing some, I'm beefing it up quite a bit. And the man's plans I got off of Etsy. I'll have a link down below if you'd like to check him out. He, I bought the plans from him on Etsy. He had modded everything, and that's where I'm doing all the work that I'm doing now. Alrighty, so there's my first ever three cuts with aluminum. Here's the one up here. I was using the J sender, and then it went wonky on me which gave it a scar, and I finished with candle, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So I stuck with candle. Uh, G-Sender, they contacted me. I messaged them. They emailed me back and told me how to revert to a prior version of G-Sender. So I won't have all those, these disconnect errors because this took forever to do that. And then it's the wrong size. But I had a mechanical drawing from the designer. I'd done a couple measurements on the mechanical drawing, and I realized what was going on. So anyway, here we are. These are the correct ones down here. I just have to tap some holes and drill some holes. We're going to do that on the drill press. So everybody watching, yeah, the Jimitsu Prober, what's it called? 4040 Pro Max. Great little machine. Worked perfect for my aluminum jobs. What I'm working on, got an O-Flute bit. And yeah, so I'll be doing a big old upgrade here on my 1330. So please like, subscribe, share all the good stuff. Links to all the people down below. Links to the man where his files are over on Etsy, where I'm doing this huge modification. And he also has things for modifying smaller probers. So you might want to check him out, and I'll keep coming back with the videos. Thanks to all my channel subscribers, members, Patreon sponsors, everybody. Appreciate why well, I don't have any Patreons, but appreciate all of you. And until the next one, you guys have an awesome day. Uh, you know, doing whatever you're doing. Later now.